Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now here we have four old processors with a combined estimated 2021 value of 20 pounds. These Socket 775 CPUs will have trouble running any modern game and that's if they even start. Selling them and posting them would actually cost me about the same as I'd make, so my next thought was trading them for something better instead. I then started to think about the bigger picture, how far could we go just by making trades? Could we go from a handful of obsolete processors to an RTX graphics card for example just by making swaps with random people online? Using any so called YouTuber influence would be cheating so trying to remain anonymous would be key throughout the entirety of this endeavour. This is the first episode of Swap Don't Shop. At first, interest for my Core 2 Quad Q6600, Celeron E1200, Pentium E5800 and Core 2 Duo E6750 was next to non-existent. I listed them on Marketplace and a few local selling sites where I had a couple of people asking to buy the Q6600 on its own, but no takers for the lot. It was a couple of days until someone actually wanted all of the chips. They needed some 775 CPUs to fix up some old Dells, and this graphics card was pulled out of one of them. According to the seller, or swapper, I should say, the card cut out at random intervals when inside the Dell machine. Nonetheless, we have gone from 4 CPUs with a combined value of £20 to a graphics card that sells from as little as £20 on used selling sites. The first in what could be an endless cycle of swapping is complete. What we have here is a Radeon HD5830 from back in the days when AMD was still known as ATI. The 5830 here was a mid-range option retailing for around £200. If past experience has taught me anything it's that power hungry cards like this will misbehave when hooked up to weaker power supplies, supplies you might find inside OEM systems. As far as I can recall we haven't tested one of these before but like all 5000 series cards it is officially a legacy product now, though it does support DirectX 11. In a way we've swapped some obsolete hardware for another obsolete piece of hardware though, this is slightly less obsolete, at least I think so. The latest drivers date back to 2015 but perhaps something I've overlooked so far is that the card is actually working and hasn't given me any issues up until this point, or up to and including this point. The XFX XXX model looks pretty good as well and the large central fan doesn't make too much noise while keeping or attempting to keep this factory overclocked 5830 cool. Because of the aforementioned driver support we are quite limited with the HD5830. Some games won't start but it sort of makes you think well even if they did start would they actually run with more than 10 frames per second anyway. In the case of Cyberpunk for example which is the first game I tested it crashes every time but even if it could run the game I don't think we'd be seeing playable frame rates even with a heavy reduction to the resolution scaling option. With that said, a Radeon HD5830 makes more sense in 2021 than any of the processors that we swapped it for, with the exception perhaps being the Q6600, though it's a gamble as to whether or not certain titles would start. In the next Swap Don't Shop I'm hoping that we can either swap this for a DX12 GPU or we can find something totally different, perhaps a niche product that might help us work our way up the hardware ladder a little further while still spending no money. I'm happy with my trade and considering the processors I traded have no use to me anymore, they won't be missed, at least not until the next Core 2 Quad retrospective video which might happen at the end of the year. I mean surely some games out there will still run on it right? Touching on the HD5830's performance while we're at it, and as I mentioned before there will be some titles that flat out refuse to run on this once mid-range GPU, but those interested in playing Fortnite or GTA 5 at 1920 by 1080 can still do so which is quite surprising. Fortnite's performance mode means that you'll get over 100 FPS on average as well which is definitely a playable experience. Even the recently released Days Gone will hit 30 FPS in some areas, though not without a reduction in resolution scaling. 
What we'll find next on this journey hardware wise is unknown and how long it will take me to end up with something decent is also unknown but I like the surprise of not knowing what we'll end up with next. It might not even be tech related. All I can say now is thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video leave a like on it down below, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.